Hello fellow crafters and welcome back to Max DM Crafting. Let's craft a fireplace. A fireplace for our fusion tile system. Take a look. I think it's pretty cool, but uh, also this is uh, very special because uh, it is uh, reversible. As you can see, you have a wooden floor here, but because uh, it is uh, for the fusion tile system, it can be changed in a stone floor, like that. Before start, if you think that my work can give some uh, inspiration to the community, please consider to support my channel through Patreon or through PayPal. Those are great methods for support this channel and help me do better and better. Also on the description box below, you have uh, a lot of links. Those are uh, affiliate links by Amazon. Buying through those links, you will have this channel, okay? No additive costs for you guys. But now, crack on. Get yourself a tea light. You can find my Amazon affiliate link in the description box below this video. Let's start with creating a tile of 4 inches by 4 inches, approximately 10 cm by 10 cm and 7 mm thick. We trace the diagonals, then we cut out two identical triangular pieces. Using uh, the tea light as a guide, we trace its shape making sure that the circle touches the vertex of our triangular piece. Take your time and carefully cut away the piece that will leave the place to the tea light from both triangular pieces. Nice. It fits perfectly. Now let's think about the fusion tiles locking system. Use one of the triangular pieces as a guide and cut out a piece of graphic chipboard of the same shape. Using the universal template that you can find in my tutorial number 29, we get the two holes needed to block the tile. Yeah, nice and easy. Before gluing it all together, create the desired texture for the two sides of the tile. I created a wooden floor similar to my in tiles and a stone floor. I used the classic technique of aluminum foil to create a pretty stone texture. Check my tutorial number 4 for my wood grain technique. At the end we create our sandwich, taking care not to put the glue inside the locking holes. Now mark the ends of our tile on the T-Light. These lines will serve as a guide to understand where not to put the stone bricks. Let's take off the thick plastic flame, putting it aside. We'll need it later. At this point, with the hot glue, we begin to cover the T-Light with some bricks. Here you can see how I prepare a pile of foam bricks in a few seconds. To improve the stone texture, simply take them and rub them in your hands. We cover the entire outer surface of the tea light with bricks, accurately cutting out all the excess bricks at the end. Now 
Now we take a thin slice of foam to cover the upper part of the tea light. Pressing the small bulb into the foam, we will get the point where we will create the hole for the light. This is just eyeballing, measuring and cutting, okay? And we create the stone texture with the aluminum foil also. Using the thermo cutter, we will create a perfect hole in the center of our piece. We are ready to glue our piece on the tea light. Yeah, nice! For the fireplace burning chamber, I glued two pieces of foam 7 mm thick, 3 cm high at right angles and cut them by eyeballing at the length that seemed appropriate. I completed it all with a brickwork inside. Now, for the back of the fireplace, I created strips of bricks, folding the foam. Actually, I would have done a lot better to use a piece of cardboard from the toilet paper as a support. Well, there is nothing better than learn from your mistakes. However, I managed to get a form that satisfied me. In the end, I completed the two sides with two large wooden beams, while I imagined a large slab of stone as a cover at the top. 90% of this project is made by measurements taken at the time and correction as the project took shape. To create the chimney hood, I started with a triangular piece of graphite chipboard of the same dimensions as the starting triangles. Using the upper vertex, I divided the triangle into three equal parts, cutting it only superficially. I then cut the bases of the two triangles obliquely at an angle of uh, around 30 degrees to create a hood with the right angle. Also, at this point, you can play with the measures to create the shape that best suits you. I then glued the hood, closing the back with a series of pieces of waste foam, cutting and drawing step by step the brick pattern. like that and cut and recut when I was satisfied by the shape I cut two strips of cardboard to create a reinforcement of the bronze plates creating the holes of the rivets with the drawing pin. A bit of hot glue and that's it. Nice! The details make the difference. It is very important that you always have a large amount of bits and scrap pieces at hand. I use pieces from a personal collection that I created through more than 30 years of hobby. Proudly said, friends. Now the actual fire. I cut the fake plastic flame at about half its height and I used it as a support for pieces of wood that I carefully cut and worked by hand. Try not to cover the flame too much and use some transparent hot glue to create nice flames.
I hold the little fire upside down to take advantage of the gravity force and slowly shape my flames. When you are satisfied with the shape, you can glue your small fire directly onto the bulb. Test that everything works time by time. Before proceeding, cover your small fire with a paper tape. Then you are ready to proceed, ready to paint. The painting process is very simple. First I covered everything with black acrylic paint. Try to avoid the fire, of course. I then covered the wooden parts with a brown herb, plus some single bricks here and there. Of course, the wooden floor. I used a semi-dry brush to brush all the bricks in medium grey. I then used a dry brush with a light grey. I like it dirty, guys. I don't like this, uh, you know, clean uh, kind of paint. I covered the entire chimney hood with dwarf bronze, after which I gave a Vallejo brown wash. To color the fire I used only extra diluted acrylic colors, lighter than a wash, before brown, then yellow, then red at the base of the flames. Finding a fireplace in a dungeon room is always a pleasant surprise. While his crackling fills the room, adventurers can play in the rickety and hot light of the flames. Okay guys, this is it for today, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe this channel. Remember to support this channel through Patreon or Paypal. And uh, yes, I think I see you all on the next episode. Till next time, happy crafting!